Hi, this is Jimmy with Trailerhead LLC. Today we'll be upgrading our next wave automation Shark HD4 Extended to the new HD5 gantry. Uh, the new gantry is a stiffer design, new and improved, uh, which will help with the cutting ability of the shark. So we'll go ahead and get started. So what we're going to be doing is measuring the deflection of the HD4 gantry by using my dial indicator. I have it set up on the bed, so it's just touching the bed, but not showing any uh, movement. I have it on the very end of the bed, which is the stiffest part. It should be the flattest. So what we'll be doing is we'll be making a one-tenth adjustment using the pendant, so we know it's a precise measurement. Once we verify that, then we'll be using a set of scales to apply pressure, upward pressure on the gantry and measure that pressure that's being applied and see what our deflection rate is. So what we're going to be doing is moving the gantry down by a tenth of an inch by using the pendant. And by doing so, we should get the same indication off our dial indicators, which will show that it moves without any deflection at all. All right, so one tenth inch, no deflection. So now we'll set up with the scales and see what our deflection and the weight is. Okay, we have our scales set up with some blocks under it uh, to shim it up up against the gantry. I've zeroed out the scales so there's no weight showing on it at all. So once we move this down 0.1 inches, same that we did for the first measurement, we should see a weight applied and any deflection as well on the dial indicator itself. So let's enter our point one or tenth of an inch and move it. And let's see the applied deflection and the weights. So it looks like our deflection is two thousandths of an inch because we only moved to about point eight. So what we'll do is check the weight that's applied. Looks like it's about seven point five, seven point six pounds. Of pressure upwards pressure uh, to cause that deflection. So once we install the HD5 gantry we'll do the same test and see how it comes out. Okay this is the HD4 gantry cut test run. It will be run with a quarter inch down cut bit, a 90 degree V bit. Uh, we'll be running a couple of pockets, a circle and a square and the V bit will be running a rectangle. Uh, there'll also be some engravings with the test data on it as far as speed and the bits and things like that. Now for time's sakes I will speed up this section of the video uh, while it carves out the lettering. Uh, some other reason I lost the video for the rectangle cut. Uh, there was no deflections or any chattering going on while I was watching it. Uh, but some other reason the video did not keep. Uh, but I do do a, a cross-sectional cut which I'll cover in a minute. Uh, that you can see it. Now for the pocketing test, we did a circle and a square. Uh, these are cut at a 0.1 inch deep per pass. Uh, we're going up to a half inch deep, so it's going to have several passes on it. Um, I was asked to run this as fast as I could, which is one inch. You know, 100 inches per minute on this particular machine. Uh, the wood I'm using is just a, a white pine. It's not real hard. Uh, but I did not have any chattering with a bit moving or anything like that. It actually cut very nice uh, paths. I did change the angle of the camera so you can see it a little bit closer up. And also if there's any deflection or chattering, you'd probably be able to see a little better. Uh, but like I said, it did not happen at all. But I will uh, speed this video up slightly just so we can get on through it. Now, I will say when I do pocketing, I do cut with the grain of the wood 
so it's a lot smoother and clearer cut. I'll uh, set a piece up and cut cross grain. So this is going to be the same cuts, same spots, but I just moved them up Z height and we're cutting across the grain instead of with the grain to see if we have any chattering coming from the bit. Using the same down spiral cut bit, same speeds. Okay, so before I disassemble the HD4 gantry, I'm going to measure the clearance of the gantry, the bottom of it, to the top of the wasteboard. Also, the travel distance of the router itself, uh, how far it can go. This particular gantry is mounted in the middle, so I'm using the three middle holes, uh, which is probably where I'm going to mount the new one, but we'll see. I'm also running a 18 millimeter wasteboard on this one. So it looks like measuring the bottom of the gantry down to the wasteboard were about four and three sixteenths. So that way you can at least have a four inch stock under this one and still be able to, to cut on it. Now the Z height the travel distance whether it's top to bottom uh, this one will actually go all the way down and contact my wasteboard with the bottom of the router so therefore I can do a, a true cut all the way down. I still have, have more room to move so it could actually make it all the way down to the metal bed itself. Now this router is mounted about midways in the mount uh, so I have room to go up or down on it if need be. Uh, we'll check the new one once it's installed. Now that we have the gantry stripped down uh, we'll get, ready to remove it off the machine but I want to show you the uh, deflection that we have within the gantry on itself uh, right now it's about in the middle location uh, so if you kind of grab it and pull up and down I mean you can kind of see the deflection I'm also going to fix the camera over here and uh, that we can see it a little bit better and I'll also get a top across the top shot in just a second So now you can see that uh, how much it actually moves just by picking up and down just a little bit. And it's this probably good four or five pounds at least pressure wise, if not more. Right, so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to take this one off and uh, install the new one and I'll check things out again.